This season of MLP was probably the strongest one that we've had yet. Now that a hiatus is upon us yet again, it's time to count down some of the season's best episodes. I'm the Bag of Vicodin, and here are my top 5 Season 5 episodes of MLP. Number 5, Slice of Life. Starting off with an episode that borders right on the edge of a divisive subject in MLP, Slice of Life was an excellent example of an episode that focuses more on being fun than being relevant to the overall MLP canon. The episode knows what it wants to be considering it jumps between all the characters whenever they have something to do, and never truly stops until the end. Despite being an episode that Larson allegedly didn't want to write, he made the best with the concept that a lot of people who look for episodes like Amending Fences would rip to shreds. While the episode can be completely forgotten and ignored while the rest of the fandom can calculate their own versions of how Dr. Hoobs travels through time or became an inventor, this episode wasn't downright insulting to the Brony fanbase because they didn't feel like one-note stereotypes despite how much time was split between them. DHX's animation helped keep all the characters alive, with Doctor's calculations done in his head and Vinyl and Octavia's instrumental setting a scene that would otherwise be boring in a script. I will most likely see this episode either at the bottom of some analyst list for being completely insubstantial, or at the top for simply being a bunch of fun. I cannot wait for the second slice of life, or perhaps some more episodes that could flesh out any of the other background ponies. But the pure fun factor of this episode puts it at number 5. Number 4, Amending Fences. It feels almost criminal to not have this in a top 5 list, so here it is. Amending Fences is an episode that could have easily dropped the ball, much like previous seasoned episodes that tackled Amora well, but not perfectly. But Amending Fences decided to drop all pretense of pulling their punches and address a problem that Twilight and even we didn't think of. Twilight being the catalyst of someone's depression. We expected Moondancer to be way less depressed and alone than she actually was, and we were wrong. We expected the episode to pull its punches, and we were wrong. We expected Twilight to solve the problem almost instantly, but the struggles that came with how alone and betrayed Moondancer felt was a bigger problem than we anticipated. Not only that, but the first half of the episode was so much fun because Minuet was such a joy to have on screen. Amending Fences almost seems like a fluke considering everything in the episode exceeds expectations. Every line of dialogue feels on point, every joke and gag works, and Hey Cart is probably the best pun that the show has ever come up with. Among a season of excellent episodes, this one would be the episode that I would show to those who wonder what this show strives to become to hardcore fans like us. Number 3, The Cutie Map. I don't think I've ever seen an episode that was this focused on characterizing their villain with the environment. The beginning of Season 5 was a weird one, since the episodes before this premiere had a Dragon Ball Z fight and Rainbow Power, which interestingly enough hasn't shown up in Season 5 at all. The Tyrk episode was completely focused on his and Twilight's power level, since they're both essentially carried the magic of Equestria within their bodies. I personally feared that these type of episodes would become the norm. The Cutie Map decided to change the formula. Despite the premiere having to introduce the Cutie Map as well as Twilight's new castle, there was plenty of time to not only bring the main six to our town, but slowly characterize Starlight Glimmer by the iron grip that she held on the town. Despite communism being a children's show metaphor that we've seen before, like in the cancelled Powerpuff Girls episode See Me, Feel Me, Know Me, this episode broke many of the standards that we've sort of accepted for premieres and finales. Starlight Glimmer wasn't immediately reformed and had done arguably more damage to the main six than Discord's own mind control. The other four characters that were introduced had their own moment to shine, and Starlight Glimmer's portrayal was only helped by the chilling propaganda, Daniel Ingram's help with their song, and Kelly Sheridan's amazing performance. While I'm a little disappointed that the magical items that Starlight claimed to use the stick from were not brought up again, perhaps they're being saved for Season 6. Nevertheless, I'd easily place the cutie map higher than Return of Harmony due to how refreshing it feels after four seasons, which leads me into... Number 2, The Cutie Remark. I'm still hyped over this episode, it's been over a week now. I never thought that this episode would not only have Twilight go through an existential crisis, but have all of these scenes where ponies are implied to be mangled, handicapped, imprisoned, tortured, or completely dead in a wasteland of entropy and nothingness. This is a children's version of Madoka Magica. This is an episode that would never have happened in seasons 1 or 2. While it looks like a lot of Starlight Glimmer's characterization and what's going to happen to her is going to have to wait until the next season, what we did have with her as a villain was fun and well conveyed considering Starlight only cared about her revenge with Twilight, not tearing down the universe like Tyrek. The song in the finale was great and fun, and both episodes gave us so much to think about and enjoy as we step into the season's hiatus. If I was told that Josh Haber was going to write a finale, I'd be mostly indifferent towards it. His last two episodes were odd to say the least, with Bloom and Gloom needing a second watch for my opinion, and Leap of Faith needing to be ignored because it's unfortunately boring. But with his minute contribution towards the MLP canon, he has written probably one of the most dense episodes of the entire show. I'd happily rewatch these episodes until I knew them line by line, and I'm sure my overall top 10 episodes would have this one in it. And finally, number 1, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. Yes, it's because Diamond Tiara is in it. 
Oh, you, you want more than that? Um, honestly, I didn't think I'd get this far. Oh, I know. Crusaders of the Lost Mark is indicative of how far we've come as a series, more so than in an amazing and existential finale like the Cutie Remark. Both Diamond TR's Reformation and the Cutie Mark Crusaders getting their marks was five years in the making, and both happened at precisely the right time. Both the Reformation and Cutie Mark acquisition program were reliant on all of the episodes related to these characters beforehand. Otherwise, these two very important events wouldn't have had the impact that they did. I know fans of Diamond Tiara that wanted more characterization for her since Season 2, and while we got some in Twilight Time, we really needed that push for her that other characters got in Slice of Life or other episodes throughout the show. Along with that, the CMCs had a stigma towards their episodes to the point that I've seen many people simply tune out of their episodes, but now we had that payoff. With a compelling yet simple plot that was taught in songs, this episode is like Magical Mystery Cure, but conveyed even better. Ignoring Diamond Tiara's mother folding like a lawn chair when her daughter yells at her, this episode reminds me of Disney with how well choreographed the songs looked and how they sounded. I love Diamond Tiara's singing voice ever since Pinky Pride, and having almost half an episode dedicated to it was truly heaven for me. A diamond is perfection, and so was this episode. Well, those are my top five episodes for this week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, let me know which episodes I'm missing, and subscribe for more episodes over the hiatus. Next week, we will tackle my bottom five of the season, and oh boy, are they a doozy. Have a good day, everyone. A bag of Icon and out.